Faila Tu is a final year student of Islamic Senior High School in the Sanaigu municipality of the northern region. With 50 cities as her upkeep money payment, she's unable to afford all her sanitary pad needs. There are instances where I won't have enough money to buy the pass, so I'll either use toiletry or tissue. And at the last, there will be blood on my dress, which causes about stigmatization. My dad can send me 50 cities, so I'll remove 12 cities and buy the pad. And the remaining money left, I'll just use it for the rest of the month. It affects me in so many ways. Like the money that I'm going to use to buy the pad, like I can use it to buy textbooks to learn. While Felatu battles with affordability, girls in remote areas do not have access to the product, even if they could afford. A UNESCO report estimates that one in ten girls in sub-Saharan Africa misses school during their menstrual period, which equals as much as 20% of a given school year. In Ghana, available data indicates that 9 out of 10 girls regularly miss school during their periods, with 44 to 54% of school girls in northern Ghana using reusable clothes to collect menstrual blood due to lack of access and funds to buy disposable sanitary pads. You just call your parents and ask them for money. They, they will tell you you should wait or they don't have money now. Like. Uh, like the cyclist, it's not wasting time to just come. Like if if it if it comes and you don't have money, unless you manage or beg your colleagues, or unless you use rag or something else or some material to protect yourself, and it affects us a lot. Ghana largely imports disposable sanitary products with a 20% import tax, resulting in high costs deepening the existing inequalities as the income levels of women and young girls in rural areas is low. Meanwhile, each year, the World Max Menstrual Hygiene Day, the day provides opportunity for stakeholders to create awareness as well as call for policy reforms to address certain bottlenecks. This year, as part of the celebration, stakeholders like NORSAC wants government to abolish tax on sanitary products. Nancy Yeri is the Girls and Female Empowerment Manager for NORSA. We are saying that remove the 20% luxury tax. Ghana can be like other countries like Kenya, Botswana, New Zealand that are giving free sanitary products to women who do not have access to them. And so we are calling on government today together with the young people um, on the Power to Youth project and we are saying remove the luxury 20% tax on sanitary materials in Ghana. Let's end period poverty together. Malawi, which according to Morgan Stanley Economist, has a GDP growing at 2.9%, less than Ghana's GDP growth rate of 5.5 in 2020, has been able to scrap 16.5% tax on sanitary products to make it affordable and accessible to young girls. The UN Sustainable Development Goals 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6, to which Ghana is signatory, strongly connects with period poverty. Sadly, there is no clear-cut policy on addressing challenges associated with menstruation. The Northern Regional Acting Director for the Department of Gender, Bishra Alassan, thinks the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection and the Parliamentary Select Committee on Gender should push for tax reliefs on sanitary parts. This is something the department is calling on government and I know the ministry is also working seriously on that. The ministry is also pushing for government to reduce taxes on sanitary parts. And I know um, the ministry would want to engage with parliament. I don't know if they have something like that on board, but it should be something that the ministry should push with government so that we can have these taxes reviewed. This can be passed through the Parliamentary Select Committee on Gender so that when it gets to parliament and this thing is reviewed, then maybe we can have taxes, if not reduced, or if not taken away, but at least reduced on sanitary parts so that these products or these products can be available to young girls, especially in our rural areas. Even though Ghana has no recognized disposable sanitary pad manufacturing company, 
Some local enterprises like Somba Empowerment Center in Tamale have ventured into the production of reusable parts where some organizations have partnered and distributed to rural girls for free. Rhoda Wendam is the founder for the center. So all year round, our center produces this um, washable cloths. Um, in a year, we produce over 2,000 of them. And the thing is that with the fabrics that we use, we don't get them in Ghana here. They are being um, imported into the country. So by the time it gets to the country, it's so expensive. And this is a product that um, the girls um, cannot afford to buy. So usually, um, we partner with organizations that buy it for them. So organizations that work with girls, donors that also want to support these girls, they are the people that we get purchasing the, uh, the sanitary pad and then we help them in sensitizing these girls on adolescent reproductive health before we do the distribution. Rhoda thinks investing in local production of reusable parts and making same available to young rural girls will greatly address the issue of menstrual poverty. We have the human resource. Those to produce it are there. But it's just access to the fabric that we have issues with. We import them. So by the time it gets to the country, it's so expensive. So these girls cannot afford it themselves. We need to raise funds to support them. So if such fabrics, we, I think this is where the government will have to partner with those that are into the production of the reusable sanitary pads. Get to know what fabric really that can serve that purpose. Because it's not all fabrics that can serve that purpose. So if they're able to get into contact with us, we let them know this is the fabric we want. Business, we have a lot of businessmen and women that I think that will want to venture into that aspect. They should just bring the fabrics down. In the midst of this, economists advise that Cutting tax and providing free menstrual hygiene products needs a multifaceted approach by government in achieving its intended outcomes. From the Northern region, I am Daina Ungwan, reporting for City News.